Hello, this is Todd Davis, Extension Grain Marketing and Risk Management Specialist with the University of Kentucky. Welcome to the Crop Marketing and Management Update, the video update recorded on August 2nd, 2018. In this update, we are going to talk about the corn and soybean crop condition as measured by USDA's weekly crop condition survey. We will then look at an example of how above trend yields may impact the 2018-19 corn and soybean ending stocks and their respective U.S. marking year average prices. The U.S. corn crop is in better condition than last year's crop as of July 29, 2018. For the top five corn states, only Minnesota has a smaller percentage rated in good or excellent condition, 79% in this year compared to 81% in good to excellent condition last year. The rest of the top five states' corn crops are significantly in better condition than last year. There is some question about the condition of this year's crop as the percentage in good to excellent condition has slipped slightly from the previous week. Only Minnesota has maintained the condition of the crop. Kentucky's corn crop is rated at 74% in good to excellent condition, which is a lower percentage than the previous week or the 2017 corn crop. The 18 states surveyed has 72% of the corn crop in good to excellent condition, which is better than last year's rating of 61%. A statistical model of corn yield based on crop condition suggests that the U.S. corn yield could be 177 bushels per acre. USDA is currently using the trend yield of 174 bushels per acre. If the corn crop would be able to maintain this condition into late September, then the statistical model suggests the U.S. corn yield could be 180 bushels per acre. The U.S. soybean crop is also in better condition than last year's crop as of July 29, 2018. All of the top five states have a larger percentage rated in good to excellent condition at this point of the growing season as compared to last year's crop. The percentage in good to excellent condition slipped in Illinois, Indiana, and Minnesota from the previous week. For the top five states, 67% of the Indiana soybean crop is rated good to excellent, while Nebraska is the garden state with 85% of the soybean crop rated in good to excellent condition. Kentucky's soybean crop is rated at 76% in good to excellent condition, which is a lower percentage than the previous week but better than the condition of the 2017 soybean crop at this point of the growing season. A statistical model of the soybean yield based on crop condition suggests that the U.S. soybean yield could be 49.5 bushels per acre. USDA is currently using their trend yield of 48.5 bushels per acre. If the soybean crop could maintain this condition into late September, then the statistical model suggests the U.S. soybean yield could be 51 bushels per acre. What does this mean for the 2018-19 corn balance sheet? The July WASD has the 2018-19 corn ending stocks projected at 1.55 billion bushels. That would be a 475 million bushel reduction in stocks from the 17-18 marketing year. This reduction in stocks is primarily from the assumption of trend line yields. If we would assume a yield of 177 bushels per acre, then USDA could project 2018-19 ending stocks at about 1.8 billion bushels, assuming no increase in use. This increase in stocks suggests a U.S. market year average price of 375 per bushel. For comparison, the July WASD projected the 2018-19 U.S. marketing year average farm price at 380 a bushel. A yield of 180 bushels per acre could increase stocks to over 2 billion bushels and pressure prices lower to a market year average price of 360 per bushel. The soybean market may be on a verge of a double whammy of having both a large crop combined with reduced use. The July WASD reduced exports by 250 million bushels due to the export disruptions with China. This, is, this increased the ending stocks to 580 million bushels. If the U.S. soybean yield increased to 49.5 bushels per acre, 
then Indian stocks would increase to 640 million bushels, and the U.S. market and the average price would fall to $9 a bushel. A yield of 51 bushels per acre could increase stocks to over 700 million bushels, with the U.S. market and the average farm price falling to 870 per bushel. So what is the takeaway message for managers? Both corn and soybean markets are at risk of building stocks above current projections due to the likelihood of yields being above trend. The soybean market is at much greater risk of reduced use due to the trade complications with China. Soybeans have the greater downside risk in corn. One thing to remember is that the statistical models that I'm using do not really capture the market's emotion, especially with the trade uncertainty and anxiety in the soybean market. And so you could see with the daily gyrations in the futures market, how the market's going to react positively to, to news and go up or react negatively to bad news and continue to go lower. And those models don't do a good job of capturing all that raw emotion. As always, managers should base their risk management decisions on knowing what prices they need to cover their different cost objectives. Managers should also consider the amount of working capital they have available and consider how price risk management tools could be used to help preserve their working capital. Managers may also have to consider uh, and lower their price expectations given the potential of having another year of above trend corn and soybean yields and larger than expected crops. If you want to read more on these topics, check out my monthly newsletter, The Crops Marketing and Management Update. I publish the newsletter after each month's WASD report. You can find it online at the University of Kentucky's Ag Econ Department's website. You can also ask your county extension agent for this newsletter. Thank you for watching the Crop Marketing and Management video update for August 2nd, 2018.